Hey, how's it going? Today we're gonna cut an Ethiopian opal. We've got a honeycomb piece with red and blue dominance. That is a rarity for Ethiopian and Australian alike. I figure we can do an, a whole video on how to set a flat base or rub an Ethiopian opal another day. After I've ground a flat base and we are ready to dot, I'll want to stick it face down so the back is upward. I have a dowel rod as a dot stick, but you can buy, you know, actual metal dot sticks. A little bit of super glue on the stick, not too much. And press it down. I speed up the video here so you don't have to watch me for 45 seconds straight and then I check to make sure it's level at the end. When I want to leave the stone to dry, I just put it in this. I like to let them dry for at least 15 minutes before I cut, usually half an hour. Quick run through before we start cutting. What we've got here is a flat lap for putting the bases on. We've got a 80 grit diamond wheel. 220 grit diamond wheel, 280 grit soft diamond resin wheel, 600 grit soft diamond resin, 1200 and 3000 grit soft diamond resin wheels. In a separate room here, I've got a flat lap just for the polishing with cerium oxide and water. Mask up. Now here's an overview of my cutting process. On the hard 220 wheel, I do weight removal and get the top-down shape that I want in the end, or close to it. With the 280 wheel, I get a lot closer to that final top-down shape and start to put in a little bit of the shoulders, kind of take down the edges. On the 600 wheel, I really smooth those shoulders out and put the full dome in there. By the time I move to the 1200, really just smoothing stuff out, uh, taking away any hard lines left from the 600. When I'm on the 3000, it's, it's just a pre-polish, getting the stone ready for the cerium oxide and felt wheel. If I were to be doing this by hand with sandpaper, I'd use a pair of jeans and cerium oxide. Otherwise, the process is the exact same on a flat lap as it is on a arbor with wheels. Here is the stone partially saturated. You can see it's still dry just a touch in the middle where it's opaque and in the outer areas it's translucent. That's a result of absorbing the water. After we've cut it, polished it, I'm going to put it in some acetone just sitting up, upright or upside down until the super glue is dissolved into the acetone. And then the stone can come off the dot. And we're dopping on the other side. Same thing as last time, but this time we're gonna dop on a domed area. Put a little bit of super glue on there. Let it dry. One of my favorite things about cutting is how cathartic it is. It really gives you the space to think or not think, whichever one you need more at the moment.
ain't she a beauty? So this is what we have after the uh, drying out process. Gorgeous blues and reds. Blue and red dominant, which is pretty darn rare. I'm glad that color dominance stayed. That honeycomb is awesome. Really, really great coverage. Looking at about 14.6 by 11.6 millimeter oval. Weighed out to about 7 carat. But it might go down to 6.75 in the end. That's what this particular stone looked like after about 12 hours sitting out to dry from acetone saturation. They'll typically take a little longer for water uh, evaporation than they will for acetone evaporation because the acetone evap evaporates quicker. Stones can vary in their water weight. I have seen stones that were 0% completely non-hydrophane um, from Ethiopia and like gem grade material. But I have also, so the lowest saturation I have seen on an Ethiopian piece that did absorb water was about 3%. And the highest I've seen was about 18%, which makes me assume they can probably even go a touch higher because I'd be surprised if I saw, you know, the, the widest outlier that exists. There's no, not a very good chance of that happening. Anyway, just make sure your stone is as dry as possible before giving yourself the weight. You get pretty disappointed if you weigh it right as it comes out and you think, I've got an eight carat stone, but you know, it's just one of those average stones, so it loses about 10% water weight. And, oh, nope, it's 7.2 carats in the end. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.